Well, um, welcome everyone for this session of power system analysis. Uh, as you as you must be aware, uh, we have been working with load flow or power flow and voltage control using the excellent power factory. The first thing that I would like to, to tell you is I, I have been using both phrases, load flow and power flow. However, I must be honest, the, the, the correct name is power flow. Because, because the power, active and reactive power, they are the only things that they are moving inside the power system. I mean, if you have a cable, the, the current that is moving across that cable and the voltage that is on the terminals, you, will, you, you can see that the power is flowing across this cable. But on the other hand, loads, loads are fits inside the power system they are connected in some very specific points for that reason using the, the the phrase load flow is probably a bit wrong okay uh, i just want to make this correction because so time to time people is uh, is is wrong when they are using terminology and the proper terminology is power flow uh, load flow refer to loads moving across the power system and that is not right okay well um i i i will i will run this session in a very simple way i will open power factory i will show you some uh some uh, features about the excellent power factory because many of you uh make some questions about some uh, elements and types that must be used in your in your assignments okay uh, what i will do now is i will go straight away to power factory now uh you can see uh, the excellent power factory version 2020 at your screen um, as you can see here i am still using the system that we have been using for for many weeks uh, this is the pm anderson nine bus system okay uh, here on the side on the right side you can see the mm, the grid summary and, and over there you can find the results of the steady state let me start the session running a very basic load flow if you run a very basic load flow you can see the results over there for instance, today um, my class will be focused on voltage control using two important things. Uh, one of the things that I would like to address today is the use of the tap changer. Um, tap changers, they are very important, okay? They are located at the transformer and the main, the main feature is that they allow to modify voltages. I mean, modify the relationship. Basically, the tap changer is just modifying the transformer ratio of your uh, power transformer. Uh, what is the application of the tap changer? Well, uh, as you must be aware, the power demand inside the power system is increasing or decreasing. And when the load increase, and the power factor is uh, a, a inductive power factor or lagging power factor, uh, voltage tend to decrease. Um, for, for that reason, it will be useful if we can modify the transformer ratio in order to increase the voltage at distribution bus bars. Um, that is the reason that is the reason that we can find uh, tap changers on the transformers okay because the tap changers allow you to modify uh, the transformer ratio there are two ways to modify the transformer ratio one of them is just modifying the transformer ratio like a real number and in that case what you are what you are doing is modifying uh, what you are doing is modifying the 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 voltage between the primary and the secondary. 
However, there are another approach that is the faith shifting transformer that allows you to modify also the angle between the primary and the secondary, okay? I must be honest, the classical tap changer is just modifying the transformer ratio in the real component. When you include the, the faith shifter, you are including an angle. For that reason, you are including something like modifying or including um, or including um, uh, a face angle in, and the transformer range, okay? However, in this class and in this uh, in this module, we are not considering faith shifting, okay? Uh, coming back to the tap changers, there are two options mainly for tap changers. Uh, tap changers that they are offload. What does it mean offload and changers? Taps that you need to uh, switch off the transformer, modify the connection, then you close the switch, close the breakers, and you have your transformer with a new tap position. That is the classical off-load tap changer. On the other hand, there is the on-load tap changer. The under-load tap changer is probably the most expensive because in this condition, the transformer is able to modify the transformer ratio when the transformer is under low conditions. That means that you can do a real-time voltage control using this kind of transformer, okay? Now, the thing is, where do we define the tap changer if you're in, inside the Xilin power factory? Okay, I will focus today in this transformer, transformer T1. As you can see, T1 is the step up transformer, is taking power from this generator G1 and is presenting the power uh, and sending the power to the transmission grid. Okay, uh, something that you can try, something that you can try is, uh, let me find here the functionality. Where is the functionality? No, I am in the, at the ground place. Is here, okay? Uh, I'll main layers. I want to show the vector groups, and I would like to show you also the top positions. And also, I would like to show you the direction of the uh, power flow, okay? What I am doing now is uh, I am enabling, uh, enabling Power Factory to show me additional information in the graphic window. What I am doing is tickling here the possibility that Power Factory showed to me the vector groups the tap position and the power flow directions, okay? If you want to use uh, animations, you can do it, but I found them a bit annoying. For that reason, I will say just okay here. And now you can see that additional information appear in your, in your graphic window. For instance, uh, right now what you can see is the basic connection. Let me zoom in here for a bit. If we focus here on transformer uh, T1, you can see now that this transformer is delta-delta connection. There is information about the loading. There is no information about tap because the original PM Anderson system, they are not tap changers, okay? Well, I would like to start this class uh, focusing on transformer T1. And as you can see, if there is not, if there is not a transformer, uh, tap changers at this transformer, the bus bar number four, the bus bar number four, there is a voltage that is 1.03 at minus 2.2 degree. And bus bar number one, that is coming from the generator. This is here, yes, you can see here from the generator. And the voltage is 1.04 and zero degree okay well i was i was trying to explain where you need to set up your tap changer 
if you double click the transformer we are going inside the um, the element okay we are in the element you can see here this is the transformer number one you can identify on the top this is ALMTR2 okay uh, what you need to do is identify the location of the type is immediately below the name if you go to the type now we can define characteristics regarding the transformer model okay for instance if you want to use if you want to use another connection start without neutral point if you want to use delta connection or if you start to use zigzag connection whatever you can uh, you can define here also if you are using delta star connection remember that you can use the clock to define the multiple degrees between the primary and the secondary i will not discuss that uh, that is topic for another class okay what i want to go is right now i move to the top of load flow okay uh, if you go to the top of load flow uh, you will realize that here on the right hand side there are several tabs. One of them is the general one, but also there is one that is the tab changer. Okay. By default, by default, Power Factory, uh, by default, Power Factory uh, allow you to uh, has two different tab changers. You can have a tab changer number one, tab changer number two. What does it mean tab changer number one and tab changer number two? well some some transformers they have two different tap changers one that we call the big tap changer that is modifying voltages in very big uh, steps and one fine or small tap changer that allow voltage changes in a very small gap okay uh, in this in this example what i will do is just basically focus in the um, the classical uh, single tap changer at the transformer okay what you need to identify is okay what is the location for the uh, um, tap changer okay you can you can you can use the tap changer on the high voltage side or the vo low voltage side i mean you can inside power factory remember this is a power uh, power system analysis software but inside power factory you can define if you want to install the the top changer to the high voltage or to the low voltage okay uh, typically typically the top changer is located where the load current is lower uh, the idea is that when you are changing the the top uh, you you need to modify the current at the transformer and the current is lower typically on the high voltage side okay at this moment i will keep the top changer at the high voltage and the next step is uh, you must you must define how many uh, uh, what is the percentage the voltage change that you will find when you when you change the top okay what I will do is extremely simple. Right now, I will say that it, each of those tap, they have the possibility to increase or decrease one percent. Okay. What I'm trying to say is, right now, uh, I am enabling the tap in order to modify the voltage, and I will say that the position, neutral position, is zero, and then I will allow negative ten and positive ten. What is this? Well, what I am trying to say is, in this case, we have a transformer that they are, the position zero is the neutral position. If the tap is located at zero position, they are not voltage changes between primary and secondary. But if I move to position number one, that means that I am modifying the voltage by 1%. If I move to position five, I will modify the voltage by 5%. And there is a maximum position that is number 10. At that position, I will modify in theory 10% the voltage. It's the same situation when I am using the minimum position. The minimum position, the top is going down. What that what that's do is mm, reduce the voltage by 1% at the time for each voltage tap okay 
uh, what I will do now is we have setting for the tab. We have defined how many tabs do we have, how many uh, how many steps the transformer has, but I need to define what is the current position. Okay, now if you are with me, I went to the load flow tab at the element, and in this case, you can see here there is information that say the neutral position is zero, the maximum position is 10, and the minimum minus 10, and each tab is modifying 1%. I didn't make any change on the face because I don't want to be involved with that complication at this moment. And I will keep the top position at zero. Now, if all of you are with me, what I will do is close this dialog. And now you can see that the symbol for the transformer has changed. Now you must recognize that the transformer, start, start transformer, connected transformer, now you have identified a small arrow over there and the number zero is located nearby to that arrow. What I am trying to say is that now Power Factor is showing you that the top position is zero. To show you that there is no changes on the voltage, sorry, I will run a classical load flow, a C load flow, and voila, we have the same voltages, 1.03 at the boost bar 4 and 1.04 at the boost bar number 1, okay? What I will do now to show you that the voltage is changing when you modify the tap position is, let me do the following. Now, double click to the transformer. Now we are inside the element, the two winding transformer. Now let's go inside the load flow tab. Uh, I want to increase the tap position by two. And now let's see what is the impact of modifying the tap position from zero to two, okay? Let's do it. Let's close the transformer. Now you can see that at the graphic window, Power Factory is showing you that the top position for Transformer T1 is number two. And let's run the power flow. We run the power flow. And right now, I believe you can see that the voltage at the boost bar number four increase. The phase angle is the same, minus 2.2 degree, but the voltage at boost bar number four, right now is 1.04 when the top position is two, when the top position is two, the voltage is 1.04 per unit. That means that we move from 1.03 to 1.04, okay? Now let's do the following. Let me be more dramatic. Let me go again to inside the transformer element. Now let, let's go for the maximum position, plus 10 at the top position. We say okay. And now let me run the load flow, power flow. Wow. Now you can see for the position uh, 10 of the top changer, you are reaching 1.10 1 1 per unit. That means that if we use the maximum top position, in that case, the voltage reach 1.10 and that is around 0 0.7 per unit above the original position, okay? Now let's do the opposite direction. Let me click here on the transformer. I would like to show you that the voltage also can be reduced. Let's go for minus two position. Now let's run the power flow. Let me see, let me check here. Yes, power factory is showing that the position is minus two. You can run the load flow. 
when you run the load flow you can see how the voltage decrease from 1.04 to 1.01 and let me run one more simulation the new simulation will be let me go to the minimum the minimum position that position here in this transformer is minus 10 we say ok we check that the transformer is located at minus 10 position top position by checking the uh, graphic window and then we run the load flow and now you can see how the voltage is decreased and the voltage goes until 0 0.94 okay well my dear students as you can see the top changer is a very useful a very useful uh, tool because allowing you to modify the voltage okay however the good question is how do we modify those those values okay uh, i have been doing this manually that that is one option but also power factory is able to uh, to use an automatic tap changer okay what i will do now is let's go back inside the transformer t1 the element transformer t1 what i will do now is i will go back to position zero okay and then i will run again the load flow to check that everything is like the base case position zero we got a voltage of 1.03 per unit that is right push bar number one is the slack push bar and we got over there 1.04 we are in the base case okay what i will do now uh, is show you uh, that power factory allow the use of uh, voltage control to keep the voltage okay uh, what i will do is double click at the transformer going to the tap uh, named load flow and here uh, you are already familiar already familiar with the with the top four general settings at the top changer number one you must remember because we use this one in order to define the top position but we did manually okay what i will do now what i will do now is I would like to test uh, to show you the functionality of the automatic tap changing. Okay, uh, Power Factory has the possibility of including voltage controllers inside the uh, the load flow function. Okay, what I will do now is inside the transformer, I will click here to say. Uh, I would like to have an automatic tap changer okay there are a few configurations here um, one of them is we can consider the tap changer discrete or continuous uh, in real life the tap changers are discrete for that reason I will keep that then i will say what is the node that i want to control i will say that i will keep const i would like to keep constant the voltage at the high voltage side uh, i will say that the main control will be doing by the voltage on phase a uh, i will go straight away to the set point the set point i will say i want the voltage to be 1.0 okay uh at this case at this case what i am saying is that the voltage controller the voltage regulator installed in that tap changer is designed to keep the voltage constant at the high bus uh, high voltage bus bar at one per unit okay however uh, because we are using a discrete control that means that we are moving at steps what I'm trying to say is we can be in the step one and in step two, and that means that reaching one per unit could be a problem because probably to reach one per unit, we need to define a, 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 a continuous uh, tap changer. 
However, if we define low uh, boundaries, low boundary and high bond, we can say, okay, I want the voltage setting to one to be one per unit, but I allow a small margin between 0 0.99 and 1.01 to be the limits. Okay. Uh, mm, mm, Probably with this example, using load flow is not the best case to show you, but uh, for now, you can keep those settings and everything should be fine, okay? The next setting is the time the time constant for the controller, but to be honest, for load flow, we don't, we don't take in account the time and we can keep the same settings, okay? Okay, what I what I have done now is I have included here an automatic controller that is uh, changing the tab in order to keep the constant voltage constant at the boost bar number one. Okay, what I will do now is say okay, and now I want to run a classical load flow, but this load flow now must be modified in order to include the automatic tab changer okay what i will do now is i enable i enable power factory the load flow function calculation in order to include the tab changers and i click here and right now you will be able to calculate the load flow and power factory is including the tap position as a state variable inside the load flow problem and when the load flow problem is solved uh, you get as a solution the tap position let's do this and nothing happened here okay nothing happened here automatic tab position yes it's enable one per unit is the setting yes ah oh, yes of course i set the ground position is the reactive is the voltage control i use the ground position sorry um we need to enable is the voltage control and reactive power regulation uh, i made the mistake I, I i took the active power regulation i am sorry it was my fault uh, we are using the tap changer just to control uh, the uh, the reactive power that is used to keep the voltage constant and right now yes we got the solution right now we we can see that the voltage at the boost bar at uh, number four is keep constant to 1.0 and power factory automatically change the uh, top position of transformer t1 uh, to minus three and that is the case that showed you that um, the top changer is controlled and right now the tap changer is defined or set to minus three to keep the voltage constant to one okay uh, well this is everything that i want to show you in terms of the tap changer okay uh, you can play at home changing settings of this of this uh, controller um, it's it will be nice if you try at home and you can see how uh, change the tap position depending of your settings okay but at this moment i don't want to go more over there because i want to spend time in another device okay what i will do now is double click double click at the transformer the first thing that i want to do is deactivate the automatic tap changer check that the position is zero and then to avoid any other mistake, I will uh, click here and um, stop Power Factory to considering the tap adjustment of the transformers, okay? I run the power flow. You can see here the tap position is zero as I want. Voltage 
came back to the original value 1.03 and the voltage at the push bar is still 1.04 okay well um i i i finished the explanation about the uh, the automatic tap changer however uh, some of you make few questions about the use of capacitors at the capacitors at the at the um, to compensate uh, to compensate and regulate voltage okay um one of the problems that i have with this network is that this network have a low uh, voltage profile that is a bit high if you look over here the voltages this is 1.04 1.03 1.0 uh, 1.01, 1.03, 1.03. What I'm trying to say is almost all the voltages are above one per unit. Using capacitors here, um, it will not improve the voltage. To be honest, what we'll do is uh, make the voltage worse. Okay. Uh, the first thing that I would like to do is destroy this uh, network by making the voltages a bit lower. And I will try to do that by changing the settings at the generator number one. And I will say that the generator number one, the voltage is the generator one, the voltage now will be 1.0. Okay. Okay. Also, I have the generator two. I will go over there and generator number two. I will put the voltage to one per unit. And finally, uh, the voltage at the generator number three. I will put the voltage to one per unit. Okay. What I'm trying to do is decrease the voltage uh, inside my transmission system, okay? Probably you are wondering why you are doing that. Okay, the idea is try to make the voltages lower uh, than one per unit in order to show you uh, the positive effect of installing short capacitors, okay? For that reason, if you run the load flow, Aha! Uh -huh. Now we have a, a very bad situation here at boost bar number six, because at boot bar, at boost bar number six, boost bar number six, you can see that right now the voltage is going down to one point, sorry, zero point ninety six per unit and minus four point four degree. Okay. What I will do now is I will focus only in the boost bar number uh, five because boost bar number five, the voltage is a bit lower, okay? And this is typically the situation at distribution level. Transmission levels, they, they, they keep a very tight control of the voltage. There is a very good voltage regulation. However, in distribution system, the situation is a bit more complicated and typically a uh, voltage regulation over there is a bit challenging. Okay. What I will do now is I will open the lock here and now I am able to install more devices inside my network. Okay. Uh, because I want to install uh, one more device, uh, I would like to increase the size of this bus bar because I would like to create a space here to install a capacitor, okay? Uh, I will install a shown capacitor here, and now what I need to find is inside the drawing tool, where are the capacitors? Uh, let me find capacitor, shown capacitor, shown filters, where are the shunt? Here, okay? What I will do now is I will select this, And now I am able to install a capacitor at this boost bar, okay? Uh, now we have here a capacitor. Let's see what, e what are the properties of this capacitor. 
in this case uh, we install a capacitor you can see the name here and this is a element chunt in this case we are using just a single capacitance okay but we need to uh, change the nominal voltage because the transmission system is using 230 kV okay 230 kV uh, I must be honest, is someone of my colleagues from the utilities is looking at this video. Probably they will complain because installing a capacitor uh, directly to 230 kV is not a real practice. I totally agree, we don't install um, capacitors directly to 230 kV. In fact, there is not a real capacitor able to be installed in this way directly to 230. However, uh, this is a very academic exercise I, and, and I want to show you is the effect of using these capacitors. I don't want to go into the details of the full connectivity of the capacitor, but uh, this is a very basic exercise, okay? We select over there 230 kV and right now, uh, the other the other setting that I am really interested in right now is the the reactive power. Okay, uh, in this case, uh, we have one step, one step. That means that we have only a single capacitor installed in that bus bar. Okay, what I will do now is I will say this is one uh, MVR reactive power. And I will say, okay, we have right now installed our uh, chunk capacitor over here. Let me run the power flow. We run the power flow and suddenly you will notice something very interesting. The first thing that you must notice is the voltage didn't change or if change is probably uh, so small that you cannot see the change. And the other thing that you must realize, if you look over here, uh, the reactive power cons the reactive power uh, at that uh, capacitor is minus 0 0.9, okay? And probably you are wondering, okay, but if you install one MVR, why do I get in here uh, zero, minus 0 0.9? Well, the reason is extremely simple. Uh, reactive power, if you remember the equation, reactive power is the square uh, value of the voltage divided by the reactance. Uh, if you are using uh, one uh, MVR capacitor, uh, uh, this device has a reactance, and because it's a static component, I mean it's a reactance, when the voltage decreases, the reactive power production change and depending of the voltage you will you will have less or more reactive power if the voltage is below the nominal voltage of course you will have uh, less reactive power production okay uh, what i will do now is let's go and install let's say this is 10 mvr now let's run the lot flow and now you can see, oh, we have a change on the on the boost bar five voltage, because the original the original voltage was uh, zero point ninety six. Right now we have zero point ninety seven. That means we have a small improvement at the voltage located at boost bar number four. Let's do the following. Now, what I will do is, I will say that I have 10 steps, 10 steps, and each of those steps is 10 MVR, okay? That means that we have a bank of capacitors, and this bank of capacitor, each capacitor has a reactive power of 10 MVR, but because we have 10 steps, the total, the maximum reactive power contribution will be 100 MVR, okay? Now let's put the position, let's go to five, and right now uh, there are five capacitors connected to provide 
50 MVR, okay? Now, if we install 50 MVR, now the voltage you can see over there, now is one per unit. Uh, in this case, we have a reactive power production of 50.3 MVR, and the voltage at the boost bar is one per unit. But let's 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 do something a bit grown. Let's go for the full 100 MVR. Okay, right now we run again the load flow, and two important things: if we are using 100 MVR. You can see how the voltage go above the limits, reaching 1.05. But also now you must notice that the rate power of this reactive compensation is 100 MVR, but the real production is 110.8. What is the reason again? Well, because the chunk capacitor is a uh, a, a reactants and if the voltage increase above one per unit that means you are producing more reactive power but if the voltage is below one per unit the reactive power production is less okay well but this is this is the case of an uh, manual this is a manual uh, this is a manual um, reactive power uh, compensation okay what i want to do now what i want to do now is okay we have let me go back here go back to position zero okay position zero means the capacitor is disconnected they are zero reactive power okay and we go back to the original situation, voltage equals 0 0.96, okay? A boost bar number five. The next step is I want to show you that the capacitor uh, can work uh, in a very uh, automatic way, okay? Uh, what I want to do now, what I want to do now is, okay, I will enable, I will enable the automatic tap uh, changer for this uh, shunt capacitor using a discrete uh, tap changer that means that you can install 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 or 10 capacitors and i will do something here that uh, we need to define a lower voltage limit and we need to define an upper voltage limit okay inside that band the controller will take uh, will not take action if you go uh, if you go uh, outside that band the capacitor will not do a thing. Let, let, let's do this. Let's run the load flow now. But I need to say voltage and reactive power regulation. Here we need to enable the automatic tap adjustment. And we run the load flow. And look over here. Oh, the position is 2. And why the position is 2? Okay, it's it's a very interesting question. Why the position is two? Well, I say to you there is a gap, there is a dead band here. The dead band here is between 0, 95 and 1.05. Okay. What power factory is doing is let me let me switch off this, okay? What power factory is doing is uh, if the voltage is outside the band, if the voltage is outside the band, power factory will take an action. But if the voltage recover and go inside the band, power factory will do nothing. Let me do the following. Let me go to the settings. Okay, I will enable and I will say this is 1.0001. And this one is 0 0.00, uh, sorry, 9999. 
I don't know if you understand what I try to do, but I mean, let me try to explain. What I try to do is close the dead band as much as I can around the setting of one per unit. What I try to tell to the controller, voltage controller, is first the dead band will be extremely small and it will be between 0 0.99999 and 1.0001, okay? <coughs> what is the idea? That I want to force the control, okay, we got an error, but let me see here, that we, for, we force the controller to go to the position one per unit, okay? What was the error? <coughs> The error is related with the conditions at the capacitor because we define a extremely small, extremely small dead band. Let me try to prevent that error by saying, okay, I want the controller to do this. Okay. Let me run again the load flow. Uh, let me try to reduce a bit more the dead band with one more zero and one more nine here. And now we got position number five and the voltage is 1.0 and we didn't get any error at the output window, okay? Well, come back. Let me come back to my explanation. Uh, my explanation was related with the settings of this dead band. This dead band defines the upper and lower limit of the voltage that you would like to control. Uh, in this case, in this case, what we are doing is trying to keep the voltage inside that small uh, band and the voltage should be equal to one per unit. And that was my target. My target was to force the uh, controller to put the voltage at one per unit over here. Let me let me run another experiment to show you. Let's see, that, let's say that we want that the voltage will be okay right now I define the upper limit at 1.031 and I define this the lower band to 1.029 what is the idea the idea is that I am forcing the controller to put a uh, reactive power uh, enough en uh, enough to push the voltage to 1.03 um, I did in a very bad way what was the way well defining a dead band is small enough around the set of the voltage setting that I want and and and, and I succeed okay Again, if somebody from the DSO, the distribution system operator, is watching my video, probably he will say <clears throat> the dead band is not so small. And, and I, must, I must agree with, with my colleague from the DSO. Uh, the, the dead band in a controller for a shunt reactance is not so small. In real life, is a bigger, a wider dead band. But uh, here, in this very specific video, I just want to show you in a very pedagogic way, in a very academic way, basic way to understand the concept. We can use the chunk capacitor, the controller, in order to keep the voltage constant inside our power system. And that is what I have done here, okay? Um, well, uh, we are almost ready to close this session. What I will do now is um, I will switch off this. I mean, the capacitor right now is deactivated. Also, I don't want to destroy my project. I will remove this. I will put back my 
my boost bar to the original position and then I will come back to the generators and I will put the original value 1.04 and then in this generator the voltage was 1.025 and the generator number three, the voltage was 1.025. And right now I believe that I put back all the values and we came back to the base case, okay? Uh, at this moment, uh, we are almost uh, near to close this demonstration today, but I would like to show you one more uh I would like to show you one more feature related with Power Factory, okay? Couple more features. Uh, some, of, some of you realize that I include here a small box at the bottom and is presenting the title. Uh, if any one of you want to include that, what you need to do is go into layers and inside layers you enable the first the first uh, title here, for, uh, uh, title. And if you want to disable, sorry, if you want to disable, uh, what you need to do is going again to layers, okay? Uh, when the title is enabled, you can double click, go over there and put the settings that you want, okay? I highly suggest that you try to keep your projects as personalized and customized as you can. Okay? Put your information, be proud about your job, be proud about your projects, okay? Try to be original, try to be yourself, okay? Um, another thing that is extremely helpful for my students is Please don't use the functionality print screen that is available for uh, Windows, okay? Um, I am really, really sad when I saw, uh, when I see some consultancy jobs and they use uh, the classical print screen to present results. That is totally unprofessional. Power Factory has many features that allow you to export your graphical results. If you go to files, if you go to files, uh, there is a functionality over there that say export diagram. And if you select that functionality, Power Factory will open for you this uh, window and it will ask you what is the format that you would like to uh, save your results, graphical results or graphical windows, okay? Uh, there are people that they prefer PNG, uh, and other people prefer enhanced me uh, Windows Meta file. For this example, I just will do it like this, enhanced Meta file, and then I need to define a place. I will store that file inside a folder here. And this is the single line diagram, single line diagram, um, PM Anderson. Okay. Uh, when you do so, when you do so, uh, you are exporting, you are exporting the, uh, the graphical uh, object into an uh, enhanced meta file enhanced window meta file uh, file and then uh, let me let me close this presentation for a minute okay let me close the presentation in order that you can see my uh, my desktop okay and now uh, you will have a file that is like this and if you double click you can open a beautiful and very detailed high resolution uh, picture that you can include inside your reports okay 
I highly suggest that you use this functionality to export your graphical results, your single line diagram, and your reports, and your results will look more professional, okay? Um, okay, that was uh, one more functionality that I want to teach you that will be extremely helpful. Uh, you can export the diagram, you can export the graphical results in many formats uh, and just show uh, this functionality okay another thing that sometimes is helpful and i almost close in this session because we are running one hour um the, the the last functionality for today is i want to show you one graphical way to show uh, the results numerical results coming from the power flow okay what I will do now is, uh, believe or not, uh, Power Factory version 2020 is trying to make the life easy for the users. And uh, you notice the change on the graphical interface. And now if you want to create a new page, a new uh, graphical uh, a graphical object, what you need to do is look, uh, do like in another um, Microsoft document what you need to do is press here and create a new uh, graphic object power factory will ask you what kind of graphic object uh, you want to create and I will say a plot and this one I will call this the plot for voltages okay and I will say execute okay when you do that, uh, Power Factory create an empty graphic object that you will be able to include inside uh, another graphical objects like plots. Okay. Uh, if you go here to the top, the 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 tool the toolbar that is uh, over there, you can find this beautiful. Uh, button over here and you click and now you are ready to insert uh, any kind of plots okay in this case I will go for uh, okay let me go for the classical bar this is a bar plot okay uh, I will say I would like to show a bar plot and Power Factory immediately will ask me, okay, you would like to create a new plot. This is a bar type plot. Uh, what do you want to show? Okay. What I will do is on the horizontal axis, on the horizontal axis, I will go to the tab uh, X axis. I will select the elements that I would like to show the results. And in this case, there is only one. Uh, there is only one column. Uh, to be honest, I would like to plot the nine boss uh, voltage results. For that reason, what I will do is select here, double click. Okay, I select nine spaces, nine, uh, and then what I will do is find the location inside the network data of my boss bars here okay what i will do is extremely simple select boss bar number one copy paste then this will be boss bar number two then boss bar number three boss bar number four boss bar number five Seven, eight, nine. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, six is missing. Uh, let me put here six. Here seven. Here eight. And finally, uh, boost bar number nine. Okay. Now we have. Uh, we had defined the horizontal uh, horizontal axis and over there you can see all the elements that you would like to plot 
and on the vertical axis, okay, on the vertical axis, I will define the variable. In this case, I would like to show the uh, the magnitude, voltage magnitude in per unit, okay? I will say okay, and I will say okay, that is what I want to show. Right now, here we have a, a plot with all the voltages in per unit, okay? Uh, let me do the following. I don't like these colors. I want to use something uh, less. I would like to use gray color. And right now we can see the voltages. And let's run the load flow. And at the moment we cannot see the difference because the scale is too small. And what I will do is the following. Let's do this. Let's increase the... And right now you can see the voltage difference between the different boost bars. If you allow me, uh, this plot over here is showing you the voltage magnitude for each boost bar. And you must recognize, for instance, that for boost bar number one, you can see here the voltage is 1.04. Let's go back to the network. The voltage is 1.04. Uh, and also here, let's see boost bar number eight. Boost bar number eight is 1.02. If we go for this plot, we can stop over here and is 1.0158 and power factor is showing only two decimal places over there 1.2 okay uh some of my students time to time they ask me okay professor this is a beautiful tool but the uh, labels and the names they are very small could you could you please teach me how to change the size okay it's very simple. If you want to change the properties of this graphical window, it's extremely simple. Right button, and you use the context uh, menu that appear over there. There is one section that say style, and over here you can select a property that say create a new style. Power Factory uses styles like the way to keep all the settings for the graphical windows. If you say uh, create new style, I will use a new name for this. I will use my FGL style. Now you create a new style. And probably you will say, oh, but nothing happened. Professor, nothing happened. No, no, you didn't notice something quite interesting. If you look here at the top, there is a, a, a menu and you can see over there, my FGL style is located over there because this graphical window right now is based on my style. The problem is that I just create this style and I didn't define specific properties. What I will do now is a right button, then a style, then edit the style, and now I have the possibility to edit all the functionalities. For instance, if I double click here on the horizontal axis, I want to change the font and I want to use, for instance, a font size number six. Okay. And as you can see, immediately Power Factory changed the size to number six. I believe is too much. Let me come back and select number four. Probably will be much better. Number four. And let's do the same for the vertical axis. Number four. And then let me change the, uh, the legend also for number four. Okay. Now we made the changes, but they are not updated in the graphical window. Let me close here. And there is a very important button that you must know that is rebuilt. 
when you press rebuild power factory immediately refresh the settings okay something happened with the vertical axis let me check style edit my style yes vertical axis what is the font it's number four what is happening let me put back number two and see oh something is happening with the vertical axis let me put back again number four uh, sorry number four and now let me go back here to the settings on the full uh, and i wish i will say seven places from the left hand and now we can see oh beautiful now we have a bigger bigger uh, fonts you can change also the style the size and so on i don't suggest to to change the font sometimes it could be uh, ugly to change that but again i present a functionality that allow you uh, customize the graphical windows results and also i present to you a short introduction about how to show uh, results coming from static simulations like the LUT flow okay uh well uh it has been one hour one hour and 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 15 minutes um i would like to close this session for the moment and and say and say thank you very much to every one of you for uh coming and attending to this uh, short class um, i remind you that uh, the videos are located in my youtube channel and for this class there is not any uh, writing document i afraid only the video however uh, you can find more of my documents and the files used for those tutorials at the github and the research gate um, Thank you very much for for this for this session okay